Hi, Professor Paul Poxtelis here. In this video, we're going to take a look at using these torsion angle estimators that are part of the 3D printed amino acid kits for use in biochemistry 461 at the University of Maryland. Now before we begin, I think it's good to review what a dihedral or a torsion angle actually is as it relates to the peptide backbone. I'm not going to get into the full explanation, this is something that you'll get in class, more how you can identify and where we're going to actually put this torsion angle estimator. So now you'll recall that a dihedral angle or torsion angle uh, is defined by the intersection of two planes and we can define where these two planes intersect by looking at four different atoms. And in the peptide backbone, we have repeating four different atoms. So if we have, we have N, C alpha, C, N, this is a psi torsion angle, and I'm using the painted uh, model here so these are easier to identify. We have N, C alpha, C, N. If we have C, N, C alpha, C, this is the phi torsion angle. So here's C, N, C alpha, C. And we also have, if we have C alpha, C, N, C alpha, so if we begin with a C alpha, C alpha, C, N, C alpha, this would be the omega torsion angle right here. Now keep in mind that it doesn't matter which direction you go, you could also go N, C, C alpha, N. So if we were beginning here, here's N, C, C alpha, N. It's the same torsion angle because the rotation is always going to be about that central bond. So again, here, this is going to be that psi torsion angle. If we have this next one right here, this is going to be the phi torsion angle. And let's see, it's going to probably be easier for me to just show this one right here. So here's the omega torsion angle that we have there. So we, we're going to be able to put our torsion angle estimator at any of these positions and determine what that torsion angle is. When we're discussing dihedral or torsion angles, the angles that we actually have go from 0 to minus 180 and 0 to plus 180. And what this torsion angle estimator lets you do is it lets you determine where roughly in the range this is going to take place. So what we have here is the cutaway where you're actually going to put this over the bond. That's going to be 0 degrees. At the top here, we're going to have plus minus 180 degrees. And then we have 30 degree increments. Now, if we're going to go counterclockwise, this is negative, so this would be minus 30 degrees here, minus 60, minus 90 degrees, etc. And we're going the opposite direction, we have 30 degrees here, we have 90 degrees here, etc. as we're working around here. So you can look at each of these demarcations as 30 degree angles that you can use to then roughly estimate what these torsion angles are. Now I've removed one of these amino acids in this case to give you the first demonstration of how to use this torsion angle estimator. Now the first thing that we should do is identify where I've put this actual ring on the molecule itself. So I put it on this bond right here. So if we count two atoms back, we're beginning with the carbonyl carbon here. So we go C, N, C alpha, C. This would be a phi torsion angle. We know that that's what we're going to be measuring in this case. Now how do we actually go about doing the measurement? Now I think the easiest way to do this is to always consider what our first atom is. So we have the carbonyl carbon here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this, and let me make sure I can get this camera view correct. We're going to bring the torsion angle estimator and we're going to put the cutaway, where we put this over the bond, we're going to line that up with our first atom. So when we do that, and I hope this angle is coming out reasonably well on the camera right here, when we do that, we can then count back to our four atoms. We know what the last atom is that we're looking for. It's going to be another carbonyl carbon. So if we go one, two, three, four, this is the carbonyl carbon back here. And how do we actually measure this? We're looking at where this bond actually comes out. And in this case, this is between, if we count up, we go 30, 60, 90. Um, if from the view that I'm looking at right here, this looks like it's somewhere between 60 degrees and 90 degrees. And because this is going clockwise in this case, this is a positive angle for that. Now, all I have to do if I want to change this torsion angle is rotate around this bond. I'm holding this in place, so I'm keeping this carbonyl carbon here. And now you can see if I rotate it around here, we're at roughly uh, 180 degrees. So this would be plus minus 180 degrees. And if I move it around this direction here, I'm sort of trying to line this up so that we're at now this case minus 90 degrees. Okay? And we can continue to rotate this around. We'd be at minus about minus 60 degrees here. We rotate it around a little more. We're at about minus 30 degrees there. You probably can't see that minus 30. My 
fat thumbs covering it up. And if we rotate it around just a little bit more, we'd be at zero degrees here. And you can see if we rotate around here, this carbonyl carbon here and this carbonyl carbon here are eclipsing each other, right? If we look respect to that bond. So in that case, that would be a zero degree dihedral angle. And again, I'll rotate this back around. And in this case, we're getting close to 180 degrees. I've gone ahead and removed one more amino acid on this to show you that it doesn't really matter what direction we look at, but sometimes it can be easier if you have fewer atoms there uh, to work with. Now, we last did the phi torsion angle, so now in this case, I've moved where we have the torsion angle estimator, and we can see now if we count atoms, we go N, C alpha, carbonyl carbon, N, this is going to be a psi torsion angle. And it doesn't matter if we go from this direction or from this direction. So what we're going to do again is we're going to take our first atom, which is the nitrogen in this case. We're going to fix this in place, and we can rotate around. And what we're looking for is where the last atom, the nitrogen here, exits. And I think I have this fairly well lined up from what I can see. And in this case, we're looking at about minus 80 degrees or something around those lines. If I rotate this around further and line it up like this, this carbonyl oxygen's sort of in the way a little bit right here, but you can probably see that's about plus minus 180 degrees. And if we move this about over here and we're looking down that bond now, we're looking at about plus, uh, what is that? That's about plus 120 degrees in this case. And we can keep rotating it around. This is about plus 90 degrees in this case. And again, you want the cutaway of your torsion angle estimator to be lined up with the first atom. And then you're looking at what angle the last atom exits that bond.